If you've ever heard of people doing uh, oil changes on Range Rovers, you've probably read up on the forums about how people use uh, suction pumps to suck the oil out. Um, in this video, I'm going to do an oil change on this 2013 uh, Range Rover Sport with a 5 litre supercharged engine and show you uh, why people might sometimes use these suction pumps. I'm going to do it without a suction pump and we're going to do it the traditional way of removing the oil filter, removing the filler cap from, uh, sorry, the drain plug from underneath uh, at the sump at the bottom of the engine uh, and then fill it um, uh, manually. The first thing we're going to take a look at um, is the difficulty of actually getting underneath the car and um, getting to the point where you can remove that drain plug. Um, it's not really any different from any other car uh, underneath your car, you've usually got some sort of protective um, plate um, that protects stones and stuff, stuff from coming up uh, and hitting the bottom of your engine. And it's usually made out of uh, a light plastic or fiber material, uh, and it's held on with a couple of clips or a few light, lightweight bolts, uh, and it drops out, and, um, uh, and then you have access to the bottom of the car and you can get to the drain plug. Um, like most oil changes, the drain plug is pretty, uh, pretty obvious which one it is. Uh, it's usually going to be a, uh, a nice chunky uh, bolt. In this case, it's a 13, 30 millimeter bolt. Um, but I did a range, I did a oil change last weekend on a Jeep Cherokee, uh, a relatively base model Cherokee, uh, not the not the track uh, track hog. I'm sorry, the trail hog, uh, which has uprated suspension and things like that. Um, this one is pretty much designed to be uh, a runabout town type of car. Uh, and as such, it doesn't have um, really much capabilities off-road. Uh, and that became really apparent when I looked underneath. And when I was doing the oil change, I had to take off the underplate um, that protects the engine. And it was uh, literally uh, a millimeter thick of flimsy uh, uh, fiber plastic. Um, it would not protect the engine from uh, from anything other than a few stone chips and maybe some uh, some uh, road paint. Um, the Range Rover is a different story. These cars are definitely designed for off-roading. Um, they literally weigh tons and they're quite capable off-road. So we're going to take a quick look underneath and find out how that affects the oil change. So we're now going to go underneath uh, the Range Rover. Um, I have it uh, up on ramps, um, so I don't have to worry about jacks and things like that. Uh, and we're going to take a look at the protective plate. The first, one of the first things we're going to have to do is remove this plate. And this is where it starts to get a little bit interesting. Uh, and this is what makes Range Rovers a little bit different from your average commuter car. Um, this right here is a steel plate held on with 30 millimeter bolts. Uh, you might be able to tell that this is quite a hefty, uh, hefty plate. It's made out of um, steel that's a couple of millimeters thick. Uh, and this is not just designed to stop road chips uh, and, little, and little bits flop, uh, flying up underneath your car. Uh, this is quite capable of possibly um, stopping the car from being destroyed by an anti-personnel mine. Um, this thing is quite hefty. And of course, the, the difficulty is going to be um, taking it off and putting it back on again uh, with just one person. Uh, but I have done it before. Um, it's not that big of a deal. It is possible. But just bear in mind that this thing does weigh quite a bit. And you're going to have to manhandle it back into position uh, while also um, uh, bolting it back on again. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll do that. Uh, I've removed the first two here. They were seized up pretty good. Uh, I've removed these two. Um, these are removed with a 13, 30 millimeter socket and a breaker bar. Uh, I had a little bit of an issue with these, these ones here for some reason. Um, I needed to put a, a wrench on the back of them. I've done this job before on another end rover and that wasn't the case. So I'm not quite sure why that is, but nevertheless, we should be able to get the bot this, this plate off. Um, there's another plate here. Uh, I don't recall whether we're going to have to take that one off. Um, but the only thing that's holding that on after you remove the major plate is these two um, smaller bolts here. But notice that this larger plate goes on top of, well, I guess uh, 
underneath this plate. So this, this plate will be the, the last to come off and the first to go on if, in, if it turns out that I need to remove it, but I might not. Um, the oil filter is going to be on the top of the car. Um, and I would recommend that you get uh, a tool to remove it um, because it's there is no space here to actually, if you might have like an adjustable wrench type tool that you've used in the past to remove oil filters, um, that doesn't work here. Um, you can see that on all sides, there is nowhere to swing um, a, a wrench type tool. So you really do need one of these um, adapters. Um, you can get one of these from Atlantic British. Um, I highly recommend their website. Um, it, it might be slightly more expensive, but obviously you can just type in exactly what year of Range Rover you have and guarantee, and I guarantee that you'll get high quality parts. Um, so this was about $25. This is the, this is the removal cap, not the actual oil filter itself, but just the, um, just the, um, uh, the special socket required um, to remove this type of oil filter. Underneath this, there's a plastic um, container uh, and it uses a paper filter style of oil filter as opposed to um, the metal canisters that you throw away when you're done. So this will actually come apart, put in a new paper filter. Um, this was the paper filter that I got from my local parts store. Um, and as you can see, it's not, just give me one second here. It is not your, um, the metal, uh, canister type. This is, uh, an insert that goes inside. Um, probably a little bit kinder on the environment since you don't have to throw away the one, one use metal canister, uh, but not necessarily kinder on your wallet. Again, this was also about, uh, $25, uh, $25 and it comes with, um, uh, a new oil, uh, a new oil ring uh, for for that. Okay, so well, I'm going to get this plate off and um, uh, and show you underneath the car with the plate off. Okay, so I have loosened all of the 13 millimeter bolts. Uh, I've taken out the front four. And I'm about to drop this plate out. Oh, there we go. Those are longer ones. I wasn't expecting that. Well, obviously, those will go back at the front. All right, so now I'm holding it up. It's only got one. And... Whoa. Crikey, that was a... Quite the job. All right. Let's see what we got under here. Okay, we're now looking from uh, from the front of the vehicle, kind of looking backwards, and you can see that there's an oil cooler here, and then this is going to be our oil drain plug. So we're going to remove this bolt here, let the oil drain out, and we'll be back to doing something similar to maybe the kind of oil change that you've uh, done in the past. Um, and then I'll show you the oil uh, removal um, put in some oil, uh, tell you what kind of oil you used and um, uh, how much uh, you need to top this thing up. I'll fill it up. Okay, you should be able to see that I have the oil uh, draining out now. The uh, oil filler plug, sorry, the oil drain plug has been removed. It was um, a 13 uh, millimeter uh, socket, which you can just see there on the end of my pan, um, capture pan. Um, so that's draining away nicely. We're also going to uh, get back on top of the engine and uh, remove uh, the oil filler cap. So the oil filler cap is located to the right, um, just by the right-hand side airbox. Again, this is the uh, five liter supercharged. So it's got air boxes on both sides. And then the last thing we got to do is remove the... Uh, cap for the oil filter. So we're going to take this thing off. Figured this was going to be a little bit difficult one-handed, but yeah, it's starting to come out. I do like this uh, tool. Um, I've used some 
flimsy ones in the past. Um, this one is doing a pretty good job. It's actually, I like how it's got um, a proper holder for um, a quarter inch driver rather than just having a square hole, which the, often the sockets, uh, socket set falls out of. Okay, let's uh, pop this out. Alright, so there's my oil filter coming out, so we'll uh, remove that, take you a little bit of an inspection of it, and uh, take a look inside to make sure, I did have a rag around here, there we go, and I'm going to be looking for, I'm going to remove that, and then I'm going to look inside for any um, any bits of metal that might be indication of, uh, well, horrible problems, but hopefully after I go through all of this, I don't find any problems, and it'll just be a case of um, swapping out the uh, swapping in for the new one. Um, I'm also thinking of putting in a magnetic drain plug, um, so I can see if there's any uh, metal filings in there. That's a cheap. They, these kind of inspections are a little bit cheaper than um, the alternatives of uh, sending your oil off to um, see what contaminations are in there. Um, obviously, that's a much more thorough um, analysis of the oil, but for me, just going through the oil filter and going and, and looking at the uh, and a magnetic drain plug is good enough. All right, so we're almost done here. Okay, last last part of the video. Uh, I have managed to get the oil filter uh, cap back on. It's hand tight. I didn't uh, talk it um, specifically tight here, and I've still got my uh, oil um, filler plug uh, out, and I have uh, a relatively longer. Um, uh, siphon to put this in and I've decided to go with uh, 0W20 that's the newer recommendation for for oil here uh, I'm not going to go into the debate of why you would want to use the lighter oil um, but I'm going to I'm going to use the lighter the lighter weight of oil uh, the capacity for this is eight and a half um, quarts so just before I do this I'm going to uh, take a quick peek inside the oil filler cap uh, and take a look at the chain and press against the chain with like a screwdriver um, to see if the chain seems to be uh, nice and tight. And let me see, got, got one right here. So I should have prepared for this bit, but this is going to be the last thing and then I'm just going to put eight and a half, eight and a half in there. So. Yeah, you're not going to be able to see this, but I'm just pressing against the chain, making sure it's not moving. So, yeah, I don't have much play in my chain, so that's good. Yeah, this is the newer uh, newer style uh, of engine after they had the catastrophic problems with chain tenseness, so I should be okay, but you never know. But anyway, yep, that's it. Hopefully this video was helpful, and I'll uh, see you all again soon.